heads there, but we can show some instruments. Okay. All right. I want to go ahead and get started and welcome you guys, if I can have your attention, welcome everybody this morning to the beginning of the fall semester. Um, we are extremely excited. We are being overwhelmed and it's a good thing. We have huge enrollment. We are welcoming almost, I think I checked, some of them were dropped for non-payment, but we'll be put back in, welcoming about 53, 53 new theory students. That's probably a record for us. And so at one time, and that's very good. And then we have, of course, a lot of, a lot of returning students. Uh, everybody's coming back, so that's a good thing too. I apologize if this room is a little warm. It always is a little warm. I've been thinking about buying some of those little personal cooler things that might be a good thing to, to have with us. So as you know, um, we, we offer our classes on campus and also online. And we are privileged this morning to have our first online graduate with us. And so Reva, I'd like for you to come up. We want to recognize you. She did this entire program online. So give her a wow. round of applause. And she is ready. Uh, she's still enrolled because she wants to take the classes to sit for, to be able to sit for the state test. So we're hoping that's going to happen really, really, really soon. It's nice but, to see you in person. Hi. Yeah, I know. I know. Nobody knows who she is. Okay. So, so Reva, just give us a minute of your of your time. I want to I want to honor you and tell you how proud we are of you for completing the program totally online. I think we've seen her maybe three or four times during More this, or less. during yeah. this whole whole thing. She lives in the valley and um, is a great tool for us there. So Reva, talk to them just a, just a minute. Uh, Hi everyone. And come over I so maybe you could be okay. on that. Yeah, maybe get out, of, let me get out of the way. Hi guys, y'all know my name, my name is Reva. Um, I started the online program 2017. I don't know exactly when it started, but that's when I started. I um, had a lot of trouble going into speed theory. It was really easy for me, Eisenhower. I, I took it with Eisenhower and I feel like she taught it very well and she was very thorough about it so I picked up on it really easily. I um, started my speed at 40 with Irvin um, summer summer 2017 and um, the speed wasn't so difficult it was more of just psyching myself out. I would listen to the faster speeds, I would listen to the 100s, I would listen to the 120s and it just I would get in my head about it and I talked to Irvin and I told her hey you know this sounds crazy to me. This is so fast compared to when you're starting off. And I was able to be talked down and she talked to the rest of the students and it was just very encouraging. Um, after that I just blew through 40, 60, 80. Once I hit 100 I hit a plateau and it took me a good two and a half months to break that. And then from there I blew through 120, 140, 160. I hit 180 in the fall of 2018 and it took me the whole semester just to pass a test. So what I'm saying is don't be discouraged if you don't blow through these speeds right away because you're going to hit plateaus and you're going to get frustrated and you're going to want to throw your steno out the window. <laughs> but go back to it, kiss it, and make up yeah. because it is very difficult. It's a love affair. Isn't it? Yeah, it, it really is. You're going to hit so many plateaus throughout the program and you cannot be discouraged. Take a day off, take two days off, but don't take too much time off to where you're going to regress. Um, I did that at one point. I took too many academic classes that fall and that's probably why it took me so long to, to pass through the speed, but I didn't spread them out the way Woodard has it perfectly designed. I just kind of threw them all into one semester and decided I wanted to graduate the next uh, semester. Which I did, but it wasn't easy. I did start my final semester at 180, and then I started interning. And I felt like, because of time management and the way I was doing it, I had just hit a limit to where I wasn't going to be able to surpass that. I wasn't going to be able to get to my 200s and get to my 225. So I started my internship, the class that everyone has to take through Woodard. And I felt like going to the courthouse at first, it just sounded crazy. The judge that I was, that I was, and I still am following today, talks minimum of 275 words a minute. Like 
he's just, he's very clear, but he is very, very fast. And as I'm going through it, my transcript makes no sense. Like there's, I'm dropping words left and right, but I learned how to clean drop really, really, really well. So with that, I would go back and take my PC mocks or, you know, whatever was uploaded and it just sounded so much slower. So I was able to pass through my plateaus like that. So I do um, recommend that you listen to 20, 40 words higher than what you're studying because when you go back to it, it just sounds so much slower. Even if it doesn't make sense that, and say you're testing at 180, go listen to the 220s. Go listen to the 240s if you want to. Learn how to clean drop. But once you go back to it, you're going to find that you're going to make, make way less errors. And that's how I was able to break my plateaus. The academics classes, they're all pretty simple. They're black and white. But the speeds are what's really going to test your patience. <laughs> so with that, As you know. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, 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 it can be very frustrating. Another thing is just celebrate the small victories. If you spend three hours working on briefs or that one word with the word ending that you can't get and you spend an hour just trying to knock that out, it's gonna happen. I've spent many nights just um, sitting. I, I study at night mostly. I'll do my one and a half hours in the morning or I'll go to the courthouse, but I do like to really focus at night after I put my daughter to sleep. <laughs> and. Um, I've spent many nights just really working on briefs, the briefs that I know I'm going to use. And you'll find that if, once you do start your internship, you will find a lot of the same words being thrown around in court. Depositions, not so much, because you do have to do your 20 and 20 in both court and freelance just to kind of get a feel of both of them. But um, yeah, so celebrate the small, um, small victories and time management, especially if you're online time management is the only thing that's gonna get you through the program. This is not your normal associate's degree. You cannot just be book smart. You cannot just study it for the, the day before and pass the test and be fine. This is something that you really have to put your heart and dedication into it. So I hope everyone graduates and <laughs> Godspeed, guys. Thank okay. you. Thank and you. congratulations. Yeah, we're, we're so very proud of Reba. Thank you for making the trip up yeah, to, to share with us. Um, we're, we're going to put her name in the Hall of Fame on the as soon as we get the uh, as soon as I get a key made to the things that we can get into it, but we have a couple it's the of small things. Yes, yeah, the small things. Yeah, uh, they're working on getting the key for me. So, so one of our former graduates is her project is to make us a nice display case, and so we have a plaque over there, and uh, so our graduates go on there, and Reva certainly is going to go on, and I'm going to delineate that she is our first online graduate because I think that's a huge huge victory it's not easy as she said being online you don't get to put faces to names a lot of times and um, a lot of it is it, like she said is time management but you see that you can get your associate's degree you can get these certificates and degrees even before you actually complete the program as far as being able to sit for the state test because of course that's the ultimate goal Likewise, you can sit for the state test before you ever finish any of the, the certificates or degrees, okay, or the associate's degree. So again, it's time management, and it's that way all the way through. You have to manage that time very well. Well, you guys know that I always choose an animal of some sort for, uh, I'm almost running out of good animals, but anyway, I found the wolf this time, the wolf, okay, and so your sack pack is going to have a picture of a wolf and my saying is work hard stay disciplined and be patient your time will come and I firmly believe that I firmly believe that I believe it because I feel that the most important thing is you take care of yourself all right you take care of yourself your time management your life your family Whatever it may be, you take care of yourself. Don't compare yourself with anybody else. I have found that I just made a mistake a while ago. One of my rare, no, not one of my rare <laughs> ones, but anyway, I made a mistake earlier when I was counseling a student because I did tell her about Sarah Murphy, you know, and as you know, Sarah Murphy is our anomaly who got out of school in 50 weeks. So this girl has it in her head. She was in my office a few minutes ago. She has it in her head that she's gonna get out of here in 50 weeks. Well, I hope so. I hope she can.
but I also talked to her about reality and you guys know what that reality is. You know that as Reva said, you're going to hit roadblocks here and there and it comes to everybody at different times. It's not always 120 you hit the wall or 180 you hit the wall. You could hit it at 40. You know, and it may take you a while to get into the speed building because Reva's right. Coming from theory, which is a structured class, into speed building, which is not so structured, it's a lot on you, is a little bit of, um, of a new game. So those of you that are coming in to, uh, to speed building for the first time, it's going to be a little bit of a new environment. But we're here to help you. We want you to know that. All you have to do, and I, I really seriously say this, you need to communicate. If you don't communicate with us, there's no way that, I mean, I'm not a mind reader, and I can't figure out what's going on. And this is especially true of the online students. Let us know. Now, we have teachers on that will be online that will be after you also, but we can't be there 100% of the time. Um, we'll try to answer you and get to you as soon as we can, but please communicate. I will tell you that attendance is going to be very important. Very important. So there will be sign-in sheets in the rooms all the time. You must sign in. Now, we're, we're going to also offer a new thing for you this semester for any kind of situation that perhaps you cannot get in. You can't come to campus for whatever reason if you're supposed to be here on campus. A uh, car breaks down that day, but you, you would have been in class if the car hadn't broken down, say, as an example. You will be able to zoom in on all of our classes this semester. Okay, all of our teachers are going to the Zoom thing and we're getting Zoom accounts. And so if you want to, if you have the time and say you're in the 180 to 225 class and you have that morning free, zoom in because we will be, we will be actually going live as such on that and we all have account I have an account I'll be sharing that with you guys later so make sure you um, you take advantage of that and if you zoom in with us your attendance counts okay so if your car fails and you can't get to class zoom in okay plan on staying with us but zoom in and when you zoom in then we see that you're there and uh, you your attendance does count. Also, we see, we can tell when you're on Wiki. I don't know if you know that or not, but we can tell. And so we look at that also and we say, okay, gosh, this person hadn't been on Wiki at all this week. Well, I'm wondering where you're getting your practice stuff and I'm wondering what's going on. Um, so please communicate. I can't tell you, Joy is extremely good at getting back to you. So. So communicate through the Canvas class. You may communicate directly to your instructor if you want to, but just communicate. Because if we don't know what's going on, we can't help you, all right? And then you get mad at us and you say, we never do this, we never do that. Well, sometimes we don't know. Sometimes it's a simple thing that there's a glitch in the programs and stuff and that happens. But sometimes it's just the fact that we don't know. The schedules are a little bit messed up right now. Uh, we are we have grown so fast and so quickly that we were not able to get all of our all of the new teachers actually hired and in place but that is being expedited and so we're hoping that in the next before the month is out before the September month is out we're hoping that we'll have everybody in place where they need to be so we are hiring three brand new adjuncts right now and two of them, the process is going fast. The third one will be a little bit slower, but we should be able to get that in. So what that will mean is that there's gonna be some adjustments on who will be in front of you, okay? Right now we have to have actual teachers who are uh, recognized as being actual teachers with the, with the district. And so uh, we've had, we've had uh, wonderful teachers. I have a great faculty, guys, I wanna tell you that. Uh, We've had teachers that are stepping up to the plate and giving, actually giving of their time for you in this interim period. So hopefully it won't be for long, but just be sure. Now, if you see some conflicts on your schedule, um, 
that schedule gets created so early. In fact, in the next three weeks, I have to create the spring schedule. So you see how far out we have to work. So it's impossible to know what we're going to have and what we need. So I just throw times in there. Okay, I just throw times in there to hopefully make it work. And so those times may not be the right time. But trust me, I will take care of you and there will not be any conflicts. We'll, we'll try to make sure that there are no conflicts. As it looks right now, the 4060 class will be in here in the mornings. The um, theory is in 315. The high speed class is in 311. And Ms. Dean will have the 80, 100, 120 class in 301, all right? Now, we're going to, and then the, the 120 to 160 class will be in the afternoon. I'm sorry, we had to go to afternoon. We just have to. If that's a conflict, uh, we'll talk, okay? If it's a conflict, we'll see what we can do. And uh, I know that that doesn't work for all of you, but we just don't have the rooms. First of all, we don't have the faculty. That can that can spread like that. Mrs. Eisenhower will be teaching that. Uh, Mrs. Eisenhower will be teaching that class, so so we can go from there. Okay. Any questions now about the fact that you can zoom in? Uh, the wiki will be available. Make sure you ask ask for access, and and Ms. Gunter is going to cover all that in just a few minutes. One change: we are going to do all testing online this semester. All testing will be online. Now, if you want to come up here, because you like it better up here, we will open rooms for you. So you can come here. But NCRA and TCRA are fixing to go to nearly all 100% online testing. And so we want you to get used to that online testing because that's the way it's going to be. Um, I think in the near future, we'll, we'll have one more test here at St. Mary's in, is it? October? Mm -hmm. October, yeah. And I think probably after that, we're going to see online testing, which means that there are a couple of entities involved. Uh, one of them is the, the group that is actually administering the test, and then I think they're going to also employ the services of ProctorU, which is an online proctoring system, uh, which means you have to have a camera, okay, either a a camcorder or you have to have a camera on your machine and they will pan the room you have to pan the room to make sure nobody else is in the room with you now I we have talked about this in the high-speed class I don't think there's any problem with you coming up here if you're comfortable testing up here I don't think there will be a problem but I think it'll have to be one person in a room at a time you can't have more than one okay so that's that's the way we're looking at that as far as the testing is concerned I do want to encourage you to check your records, please. Um, make sure, first of all, that you have court reporting as your major. I'm looking back over some of these and court reporting is not your major. Uh, that has, that's a paperwork kind of thing that you have to do through admissions and records. I can't do it for you. So if, you're, if court reporting is not your major on, on your degree plan, you need to get that fixed because that just simply means we're not going to get credit for you and we need we need to get credit for you. The second thing is there are lots of certificates that are that are ready to be given. So if you feel like like Josh got his, I think did you tell me this summer you got yours? Uh, I'm processing some more, so I know some of you are there where you need to get your at least your first certificate. If you have not gotten your first certificate, please let me know. Just let me know if you've been here for a bit and you've covered all those things. Um, I think you should let me know so I can get that processed for you. It does take a little bit of time. It has to go to admissions and records. They have to check it. And then they will mail you your certificate. Did you get your your associate's degree? You, have, yeah. you got it in the mail? I got it in the mail, but I have not your others said no I haven't processed them yet so I'll let you know I'm in the process of getting that done so uh, yeah you should get all those in the mail but there is a form that I have to have filled out from you so if you want a certificate or you think you're ready for a certi uh, certificate and haven't gotten it yet uh, Reba you're okay because I've got your your signature forms but uh, the rest of you need to give me those signatures okay uh, if you are wanting materials for the written knowledge test 
I, instead of meeting as a class this time, that's usually through 1191, but some of you didn't get signed up for that and that's okay. But if you want the written knowledge skills test material that I'm going to prepare for you, yes. what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it outside my door, all right, every week. So I kind of need to know how many to prepare so that you can have practice material in order to prepare for that test. If you're totally online, you need to send me your email so I can send that material to you. I'm not going to print the sack packs anymore. It took a lot of time. I, I prepare them and we'll still have the sack pack. Okay, the sack pack will still be available, but I'm sending that to Ms. Gunter, uh, hopefully by Fridays. Sometimes it's Saturday, but it'll get there the first part of the, or the last part of the week. And so you need to print your own. If you want a hard copy of the sack pack, you need to print your own. Other than that, it goes in on Canvas and you can see it, all right? So we're not going to provide hard copies. It just, it was burning down trees like crazy, um, for one thing. It took a lot of my time to sit there and listen to that copy machine go over and over and over again. And it was just kind of a waste of manpower. So. We will load them. They will be in Canvas. She's already loaded the first one. This is the way it looks. And so please um, go ahead and print yours out if you want a copy. If you don't want a copy, you just want to look at it on the from Canvas, that's available too. Um, I think I've covered everything that I need to talk to you about, um, except that I want to tell you there's a few little things that we as a faculty want to share with you and I hope you understand this we are getting like I said we're, we're the largest we've ever been in a long 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 time we are also getting a lot of Alvin students so they have as you know their program closed and their last day was I think a week or so ago and so they are coming they will be online and so you won't see them, but if we're Zooming, you'll be able to, if they come, you know, through Zoom, you'll be able to see that they're there in class. We want to welcome them. We want to welcome all of our other students that are coming from far and wide. I'm getting calls now from Minnesota, New Jersey, uh, California, uh, Wyoming, I mean, all over the place. Since we are an NCRA approved school now, our access information is given to everybody. Uh, what we're finding and the reason that we feel like and we're very grateful to the court reporters y'all are those of you online I'm sorry you'll just have to kind of imagine that you can have this food but they came up and prepared kind of grab-and-go things for you so please take advantage of that um, but what they're doing now is they have prepared flyers they have two different kinds of flyers one for the A to Z program and the other for just our program and so they're handing those flyers to every juror, every juror that comes and sits on a jury down, downtown in the courthouse. So you can imagine we get calls all the time, you know, now, and my phone is just ringing off the wall. So if I haven't gotten to you and you've called me, I apologize. But when I come in and I have 50 phone calls, it takes me a while to get to those. And I'm not exaggerating, not exaggerating. So um, we're grateful for the, for the court reporters and their support for us. I'm grateful for you guys. I'm grateful for your, your stick to -ness. I'm grateful for your diligence. I'm grateful for your wanting to be a court reporter and pursuing your dream. So here's what we want to tell you. First of all, we believe in you. I believe you can be a court reporter. You may not be one in, in a year. You may not be one in two years. It may take you four. I don't know. Life gets in the way sometimes and throws us a lot of curves. But we believe in you, and I believe you can be a court reporter. It takes diligence and work on your part, and you know what's, what's, uh, what's required. I like to brag when, when I get a chance to over with the deans and the president and everybody occasionally, I mean, they're noticing, guys. They are noticing that we are exploding over here. They are noticing it. And they want to know what our secret is. 
and it's not Viagra, okay? We're not growing that way, okay? It's not anything like that. We are just exploding because there is a need and there's a shortage and we, we need to get you guys out. We need to get you out. You need to get out. So please, no, we believe in you, but also believe in yourself. As Reva told you a while ago, you're gonna hit walls. You're gonna have discouraging times when you would like no more than to throw that steno machine up out of a 100, I don't know, 100 floor building or something and just watch it crumble when it hits because it's, that's the kind of relationship you have with it. But this is your, your key to the future. So love that machine. Okay. We, also, we are also here for you. Sometimes it's hard to get, uh, get to us. I am particularly hard to get to. I will, I will admit that. I wear a lot of different hats. And so um, we're working on fixing some of that and it's gonna be a little bit better, but just be patient. And don't say, well, I've tried to call you 50 times and you answer, but well, that's right, probably not, okay? I will get to you though. All right, you are capable of great things. Please believe that in yourself. Please believe in yourself. You are capable of great things. You are respected. We respect each and every one of you. You are listened to, whether you think so or not. You can come to any of us at any time. I would prefer that it not be in a griping mood. But if you have suggestions on how we can improve, I'm always open for those. Uh, you are unique. You are one of a kind. Nobody has your same fingerprints, okay? You are different, and that's not meaning that you're, that doesn't mean that in, in a, any kind of rude way at all. You are unique, and we like that about you. You are worth it. You are worth the hours that we spend for you. You are worth the hours that you spend on yourself. We expect great things from you because there's obligation on your end too. We can be here for you. We can give you everything you need, but there is an expectation that you have to give back also. Uh, we will never give up on you, and we don't want you to give up on yourself. We care about you. And honestly, the bottom line is, if you succeed, we succeed. It's just that simple. If you succeed, we succeed. And so we need you and you need us. Your success is our success. We are all in this together. And basically, you are the reason why we are here. We would not even have, oh, well, I'd be teaching something else. But uh, you're the reason that we're here. So with all of that uh, being said, as I said, the wolf is my animal for this semester. Uh, you can look at the information about the wolf. It's not always um, looked upon as being the most of the desired animals, but they're beautiful. The wolves are beautiful. They're beautiful creatures. Uh, they have a reputation sometimes of being a little bit dangerous. Um, but there's a couple of things about the wolves, like one of the other animals we studied not so long ago. The wolves are monogamous. I don't know if you know that or not, but they are monogamous, meaning they have their own little family, okay? And I consider us to be our own little family. There's always a leader, an alpha person, that's in charge of the, of the thing, of the, of the group. They care for their children, they nourish, they protect, and we feel like we we want to do the same thing for you. And then a confession. I love some of the reality shows. We've talked about this in class before. Naked and Afraid is one of my favorites. I know, don't judge me, okay? But I like Naked and Afraid. I like the, the episodes that they do, the adventures they have. Another one I liked are the, what's that one with the family? Um, Alaskan Bush people. Okay, Alaskan bush people. And so they were, on this last episode that I watched the other night, they were having trouble with wolves because the wolves were coming in, you know, to, to, to um, kill their chickens and their other stuff, you know. So they were trying to make protection for their animals, but yet one of the things that they, they uh, did not want to do was to kill any wolves because they're beautiful creatures. 
So the wolves come in packs, right? They, they are monogamous, they have their own little families, they travel in packs. And so one of the things that the Alaskan bush people, the father always says, and calls his family is a wolf pack. Okay, so we are going to be wolf packs this semester in Steno, okay? So you're part of the wolf pack, enjoy the semester, and have a good one and be blessed, okay? We're here for you. All right, you motivated, ready to go? I, we are gonna test tomorrow. I will put tests on tomorrow, okay, for your testing on Wednesday. And there will also be a Friday test, so we're still gonna continue with the mocks on Wednesday, the Friday test, and then on week four, eight, and 12, we'll have another blitz week. Now, probably tomorrow's, uh, Wednesday's test will be an archived test that you may have heard before. It's okay. Hopefully you're not at the same speed you were when you first heard it, so just take it, okay? And if you, if you, it's one that you're really familiar with, it's your sugar stick, okay? Enjoy it. And it will count. And it will count. So take it and, and enjoy it and pass it and let's get off to a really, really good start. Do you guys have any questions for me before I turn it over to Ms. Gunter, who's going to talk to you about Wiki and um, Canvas? Any questions? Are they, they going to have class this morning? We will not have class at all today. So if you're in medical terminology, we will not meet this afternoon. Okay, we have too much going on. Yes? Will your um, classroom by your, the classroom by your office be It's open now, okay. I think. So if y'all want to go over there, you can. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Any other questions? So again, 4060 in the mornings will be in here. So if you're at 4060, you'll be here. Um, 80, 100, 120 will be next door. And then uh, 120, the overlap of 120. And here's what I'm going to say about that. If you're just barely into 120, I think you should stay with Ms. D and let her go. If you have passed the 120s and want to progress up, then go with Judy. That's up to you. I'll let you all decide where you want to go there, okay? But that will be in the afternoon. Now, if that's not going to work for you, we probably need to talk a little bit and see what we can do. All right? Any other questions? Theory is in room 315. How yes. does that Zoom work? The Zoom? Can you, do you know I have not actually signed up for it yet. Well, I apologize. Actually, it is. I, I, I mean, it's, actually, it's, it's available through SAC, but I've got to learn from SAC where to do it. I've got it on mine, and I'll, I'll, I'll try to get something out to where you, you can go online. I can give you the, we'll give you the, um, I will figure it out by the end of the day and post it on campus. No, SAC has their own, so that's what we want to but go to. But I mean, to. how to get to it. Yeah, okay. So it'll I'll, be I'll on I'll find out yes, by the end of the day. It's real easy. So they'll, they'll uh, do a conference number, and basically what you do is they'll give that to us, and then when you sign in, you do your own account, and then you sign into that, and it will, as long as they're live, it'll show it will pop up. But where do you so find you it first? Where well, you? there's a sign in. SAC has their own, and I would prefer that you go oh, well I oh, well we have a meeting number yeah I have a meeting number and so when when like in the morning I'm gonna I'm going to give that to everybody you can you can for mine and every teacher will do that too when they get logged on so if you're on your your you go to zoom.com no it's zoom what is it it's a special zoom.alamo.us thank you zoom.alamo.us yeah you have to download it on your computer and uh, is that how you went to it? Like yeah, it's, a, it's like a. Well, Zoom. Well, have you ever done go to meeting or? Go ahead. What, Reba? Yeah. And it's free if you do through the. Yeah, if you do it through the, through the Alamo College. <laughs> Sorry, it's free. There's no cost to it. And then I have a meeting number, and every teacher will have a meeting number. And we'll give you that, and you can you can log into that. Refuse to connect. Oh. Okay. Anyway. Okay. We'll have to do it somewhere some other time. Oh yeah yeah yeah. You, it's you you Google you search for Zoom I did. Alamo US. I don't did. don't put in not. But that's not actually the web address. <coughs> okay. Yeah, and you're and. Yes. And then yes, you can. Alamo, yeah. You can. And we can US. mute you. You can talk. 
you can be a part of the class, actually. Oh, so, so like you can still ask questions? Yes. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Here it is. Here it is. Okay. Okay, don't look, guys, look at, look at this. In your search bar, don't put the dots. Put Zoom Alamo US, and this is what I got. And there it is, creating a Zoom account. And you create your account, and as we create sign our account, each, uh, uh, each teacher will have a sign-in. And it says create a new account right here. Okay. See the red arrow? It'll take us a, probably the first week to get all this situated, but we will we will do that, okay? And then you all send the account, I mean the Thank you. conference number? Yeah, we have a conference number, yeah. And you'll give it, you'll I already give me, have mine. You'll so. give us that and we'll... Well, you get your own conference number. Okay. Perfect. Okay, everybody gets their own conference number, so. Okay. Any more questions about any Zoom? More, any more questions before we go? All right. Are you leaving? No. Okay. Okay. Y'all yeah, be sure and get all this food, please. I was expecting a whole lot more. I'm surprised that I was where too, the rest of but everybody that's okay. is. But anyway. Is there coffee? Well, that yeah, you have to you have to tip it over. Yes, there is. Any other questions? Big it's gone. Before okay, we, uh, I'm not going to move in front of the camera. You're going to hear me talk from back here because I want you to see the screen. Can you look at that screen and make sure it's showing the is it showing enough the of the board? It may need to be tilted a little bit. Okay. Any questions at all? If y'all feel like you're comfortable enough with, with, with if you have, that's what I was fixing to say. If you are new to Canvas and Wiki, please stay. If you are not and you need to go, I'm okay with that. But if you, it, it will still let be me just say before you leave, those of you who are not new, this is not a document. This is a photo. Please don't submit photos for your test. I have to print them, and this is what they look like when I print them. Then I have to read them. Please get a scanner and a, and a way to upload that is not a photo from your phone. Thank you. Most of you don't do that. There's just a couple that do, but I just wanted to throw that out there. I'm going to start with by talking about the, the wiki. <coughs> Thanks, guys. Thank you. See, see you online. Oh, oh, she will in the afternoon. <laughs> All right, I'll tell her I'll try. That's fine. That's fine. Um, if we're gonna do online, do I have to tell somebody because I'm signed up for nope, a class? Nope. Nope. You just do it. I just go. On, I just you do just it online. Do it. Okay. I don't know if I had to tell you guys. Have, have, you, have you done online? You've, you've been this is, Yeah, this is my second year. Yeah, I've been I online. No, I just didn't you know, know if I had to tell you. The only change is we don't do both now. You have to either be online or in the class. Okay. Yeah. So one or the other. Yeah. yeah. So I couldn't, like, if I wanted to Zoom sometimes, I couldn't yeah. do that? Yes, you can. Oh, no, you, you can, can Zoom online, even if you're absolutely. online. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Even if you're online, you can yeah. Zoom. Okay. Like, if I want to see, you know. Yeah, you bet. Okay. You bet. Okay, and I cool. think we're recording the Zooms too, I think. I, we're going to try to record yeah. them and then upload them. But, okay. I, you know, we'll probably have a place on the stack, on the wiki that we'll upload them to. Okay. If we get, if that's an option. We're, we're not sure yet, but if that's an option, we're going to we're gonna do that. So you could go and look at it some other time. Okay. If you're not available during that class time. Okay, perfect. Cool. I like that. <coughs> But for, for the speed building classes, I don't know how they can tell us that they're all live on campus. Because all you the testing is online. Oh, for Zoom, you mean? Oh, yeah. All of the know. testing is online. So they're all yeah. partly online. The only way we'd be able to see on the wiki that would be really the only way, you know, to be able to see that. You can also see it. Oh, yeah, you can. Really? All right. So I'm going to start with the with the wiki. You hear us talk about the wiki, those new people. We, we talk about the wiki a lot. That's where everything is found as far as your practice work, the dictation, the class dictation every day is posted on the wiki. And I'm going to go through each of those places. This front page is a little bit overwhelming. There's a lot of, a lot of stuff there. You'll notice that it goes back to summer 2011. Every semester is there. If you want to go back and look at those semesters, you can. 
In addition to that, at the bottom, you'll see some other places you can go for practice. That's for your use. Your use anytime. Now, to get to the sack pack, there's a link from Canvas that you can click on, or you can type in this web address right here. It starts out SAC Dictation Homepage. SAC Dicta all one word, SAC Dictation Homepage dot pbworks dot com. That's the wiki. That's gonna be, I'm gonna tell you that two or three different places, but make that a part of your, your everyday events. Announcements will be here. There, any kind of announcements that we need you to know, they'll be there. If you are an on to nine student, and you're all online students in that all of the testing is being done online, even if you come to class for, for online for face-to-face -face dictation, you're still doing testing online. So you need to know that. You have to have a way to scan your test and submit it back. There's a tracking sheet here. I don't know if I have access to it or not. It's a tracking sheet that, that you can keep track of your speed. I will tell you when you pass a test, when you pass a test two times, I will tell you to move to the next speed. You should also be keeping track of that for yourself. Because every once in a while, and I did that this, this past week, I will send out a message and say, this is what I have your speed at, please verify if this is not right. Tell me. So you should know what your speed is. And you, get a, you don't have to be at the same speed in all three areas. You can be at one speed in lit, another speed in jury charge, and another speed in testimony. And I'll tell you that periodically, but you should keep up with it yourself. When you pass two of the same test, I will tell you this is your second pass, move to the next speed, and I'll tell you what the next speed is. But that's a chart that she has on there for you that you can use. She being Mrs. Mallon. Mrs. Mallon manages the, the wiki. There's the degree plan for court reporting. There's some NCRA requirements, and I'm not going to click on those, but you can do that at your leisure. Uh, this is the library and reference materials for court reporting through the San Antonio College Court Reporting Department. This is the TCRA website, some information there about state testing. All of the theory classes are on this line, this purple line. The purple line that's at the top is going to mean this is the current year, so there's not going to be anything there today, but there will be something there tomorrow. Every day they, they record their classes and upload them there. Fall 2019 is where we are today. You're going to want to go there, and the first time you go there, it's going to ask you, it's going to tell you you're not authorized or you're not eligible or something. You get a little pop-up box. All you need to do is put your uh, email address in that pop-up box, and there's a box where you have to put a letter. If you haven't done that yet, you need to do that. And if any of you want to be logged on and doing that right now while I'm talking, feel free to do so. You log on to the computer, not to ACES. This is outside of ACES. It's just on the, it's just on the, the internet. Uh, but when you get, when you ask for uh, permission to join the class or the, or the page that you're asking for, there will be a little bit of time involved because <clears throat> a person has to actually see your request and process it. It's not an automatic robot. Uh, acceptance but once you get authorization in your email you'll get a message saying PB works has approved you click here and you go from that link to the front page and then you're in and you don't have to do that again you'll be in until the end of the semester on the front page you see the same picture that mrs. Woodard was talking about that's on the sack pack and then you have the links this side over here you don't do anything with this is the side you're concerned with. Link to ACES. Okay, if you're on here and you need to go to ACES, there's your link. If you need to slow something down that you're listening to, not to take a test necessarily, but just for practice, if you're hearing something that you just can't 
there's a way there to do it. I don't recommend that you do that unless it's an absolute necessary thing. Uh, these are some practice things. There's a number of our video. There's information about BCRA. And then there's a bunch of links that you can look at when you have time. The fall dictation will be here, meaning this is what went on in the classroom, in the live dictation classroom. There's your 4050 speed. There's Ms. Irvin. There's Hopkins. There, each teacher has their own page where they upload their dictation for the day. When Ms. Dean finishes her class, she has been recording all of the dictation that she's been doing. She will upload it to this page. You can then go in over and over again and listen to it. You can do that with all of these instructors. Just the audio. Just the audio. This is not Zoom. This is just audio. So, Joan, we're still doing the recordings in addition to Yes, isn't that what I'm okay. just saying? Okay, I thought so too. Yeah. Okay. The return to home page button will take you back to the home page, but it will tell it will tell you first of all you can't go there. Because the word wiki is in this page, the 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 service providers all think that that's a scary place to go, but you can go there anyway. Tell it you want to go there anyway. Or sometimes the back button will work. Eclipse, this is uh, past classes for Eclipse are, are posted here. If you get confused about your Eclipse program or if you run into a glitch about your Eclipse program or you haven't had the Eclipse class yet and you need some assistance in doing something, watch those videos. That's Mr. Zarati's class and he's quite good at explaining Eclipse. is about to expire so I just call that number I'm going to talk to you about that in just a minute okay that's a tutorial and there's it tells you how to edit it tells you how there's all kinds of things you need to know some of these other people that are around here can answer your questions if you're on campus but if you're not on campus and you have an eclipse issue check there and see if the answers there okay she talked about Wednesday testing. This is Wednesday testing is called PC mock. PC mock is your weekly test that is available on Wednesday morning. You have from Wednesday morning until Sunday at midnight to take this test. You take it whenever it's convenient for you and you upload it into Canvas, which I'll talk about in a minute. But you will find the test under week one there's nothing there yet, so I'm going to show it to you, but there it is. If she has preview words, she'll put them up here. There will not always be preview words. Sometimes there will be. Be sure, though, you look to see if there are, because if there is a preview word there and you misspell it in your, t in your transcript, I'm going to count it wrong because she gave you the spelling for it. When she gives you preview words, that's letting you know first how to spell it, and second, whether or not it's a proper name and needs to be capitalized. If it's not there and there's a question about how to spell it or there are options about how to spell it, I'll probably point it out but not count it wrong. I, tell, I grade all the tests. Okay, so that's, that's preview words. If you're at 40 words a minute you, and you have a test, it'll be here. There are some tests not available yet at 40 words a minute. We're working on getting a complete bank of 40 words a minute test. So we're going to try to have at least one. What I mean is you may not have a testimony test the first few weeks. You haven't done testimony yet probably anyway. You will learn how to do that in class. Okay, but you should have either a lit or a jury charge or both at 40 words a minute. If you don't and you want to try the 60s, go for it. That's what that speed uh, uh, speed thing on, on the thing was about that I showed you just a few minutes ago. If you have to do a 60 and you need to slow it down, back on the front page there was a thing that showed you how to do that. Most, I, a lot of people that are at 40 words a minute, if there's not a test there, they'll try the 60. And you'd be surprised how many go ahead and pass 60 without ever taking a 40. So don't be scared to try. It's not gonna hurt you. It's not going to count against you if you don't pass it, but it will count toward your participation if you attempt it. Okay, 
60 tests are sometimes three minutes and sometimes five. That varies. Don't worry about it. Do whatever's there. And then 80 and above, there will always be five minutes. There will always be three tests. You will take all three tests in a Wednesday test. However, they may not all be at the same speed. You might be at 60 for, for testimony and 80 for lit and at 100 for jury charge. Then you have to go to each of those different speeds to find your test for that week. Okay? That's the Wednesday test. You take it on the wiki. You go to the wiki to take it. I'm going to tell you more about the Wednesday test when I start talking about Canvas. Okay? The test blitz, which is the next column, is available on week four, week eight, and week 12. That means there are going to be one of each test those four, three weeks, and you will take them anytime you want to. She'll usually start posting those on Monday. Sometimes it's Tuesday. You can take them anytime during the week, one at a time, but I want them submitted one at a time. And I'm gonna show you why when we get to Canvas. You're gonna submit lit by itself, jury charge by itself, and testimony by itself because they each go into a different assignment in Canvas. Lit, jury, and, it, and you take them at whatever your current testing speed is. They will count to help you move up they could be counted as your first or second pass if you pass them. They won't count against you if you don't pass them, but I want to see that you took them. The Friday test is the same thing. The Friday test is usually not posted until Friday. There will be one Friday test every week, and it will only be one test. Usually week one is lit, week two is jury charge, and week three is testimony, and then it starts over. You will only have the one test to take and submit each Friday. It's not due until Sunday. If you want to wait till Sunday and take them all, that's fine. But don't wait till midnight Sunday to start. Don't wait till 11 o'clock and expect to be through and submit it by 12. Doesn't happen. 12 o'clock, they need to be there, midnight. Is, is that also the on the week four and twelve? You're giving us every Sunday every day. test that I that we give you Sunday. is due Sunday midnight. Every test that we give you, you can submit the the blitz test on the day she gives it. Okay. Anytime you can submit it as soon as it's up there uploaded and you take it, and that helps me tremendously right. in the grading. But it's not required because a lot of people don't have time to do that. It's only required that you submit them by Sunday at midnight. Waiting, stress on you. Yeah, I'm when, sure you when, get a lot of them. My, uh, my Monday is spent grading tests. And I was bad about doing it. I made it right on Sunday. So I'm gonna... A lot of people do that, and that's okay. I mean, you know, do what you can, what works for you. But just don't wait till 11 o'clock, because if you have a computer problem, if you have a, a eclipse problem, if you have, you know, any kind of an issue, there's no time to fix it before it's due. Right. Okay, so make sure you give yourself enough time. For the Wednesday test, you should allow no less than three hours because you've got to edit it and grade it. And you have, you're allowed an hour for each test in editing. What about right. submitting when they don't pass? Whether you pass or not, I want to see it. I want you to send it to me now. Especially for those of you who are at higher speeds where you've got 17 pages, if you only want to send me your completed cover sheet, I'm okay with that on, an, on a non-pass test. And I'm going to talk more about that in a minute. But, and, but you know, you don't have to submit the whole test. If you, if you blow it and don't pass anything, as long as you've filled out that cover sheet completely, I will give you credit for taking that test. You don't have to submit the whole thing. You won't get an X. Okay, I'm going to talk more about that when I get to Canvas. Great question. All right, any questions about the wiki? Don't forget how much other information is available to you on the wiki. Nobody should ever have a problem finding practice material. It's there. 
it's there. You have to request access to every page that you want to access. You're going to have to request access to the Wednesday test. Don't wait till Sunday night to do that. Do it today if you have a chance. Same thing's true with the test blitz. You're going to have to request access to that page. Same thing's true with the Friday test. You're going to have to request access to that page. I believe once you request access to fall dictation, you've got all the instructors. I don't think you have to request access to each individual instructor. But you are welcome to listen to any instructor. Each instructor records at a different speed. So if you are in Ms. Dean's class and you want to listen to Ms. Eisenhower's dictation, you can do that for your practice. And a lot of times they're going to be dictating the same material because they, they, they start the week using what's in the sack pack. And that, that'll help you see here at different speeds. Any questions about the wiki before I go to Canvas? That everybody's going to be trying to get in. Yeah, so be, be, be aware. Slow. Be aware. Everything. Wiki will be slow this first week. Remember that the wiki is not in ACES. The wiki is outside of the Alamo website. It is its own website. But we have links from Canvas to it. All right, I'm going to Canvas now. You get to Canvas by going into ACES and requesting, I don't know if I'm still there or not. I don't really know, it's locked me out. You go, to, you go to the front page of ACES, you log into Alamo Colleges, you get that front page and it says log into ACES, you log into ACES, and on the right hand side, there's a big box that says Canvas. It's got the little circle. It's kind of a red and white circle. That's the Canvas logo. You click anywhere on that box and it'll take you to this page. Well, it'll take you to your dashboard. Your dashboard might look different than mine. My dashboard only has this class on it. Your dashboard might have a whole bunch of classes on it. You should be, you should see, and I know you all do, this class, 12, CRTR 1291-001. That is the speed building class, no matter what your speed is. If you are 40 words a minute or if you are at mock, that is your speed building class. That is where your assignments are. I have them all paired so that they all go into this class no matter what your speed is. Any questions about that? You click on the link and it takes you to the front page. Front page shows you the picture of the wolf, full blown color. This is your home page. Your home page has a bunch of information down here. If this is your first year, first semester, I'm sorry, of speed building, please read that. There are some things I ask you to do. That tells me that you did read it and that you know what you're doing as far as Canvas is concerned. I'm not going to read it to you now because there's so many people that have already done it. But one of the things it's going to tell you to do is to send me a message. This box right here is the inbox. I have already sent messages to every student, some more than one. So you should all be seeing messages there. If you haven't already responded to them, please do. I want to know that you are able to get in there. And if you will give me your phone number, that would be very good. Some of you have already done that. We as instructors need to know how to communicate with you if we have a problem that we need to talk to you about. And, you know, we could go dig through ACES and probably find it, but it would be so convenient if you would just give it to us right here. I have a chart that I keep that only the instructors will see. I do not share it with anybody else. And if I have you in my phone, I'll answer your calls. If I don't, I probably won't. You'll have, I'll have to call you back. But we'll talk about that in a minute too. Notice that there are announcements. I periodically will make announcements. Ms. Woodard will periodically make announcements. Any instructor can make announcements on here. If we make an announcement, it's important. You need to pay attention to it. It might tell you that that the campus is closed due to the weather. It might tell you that, that uh, we're not having a test this week. It might tell you anything, but it's something you need to know. I will typically send out a message that mimics the announcements as well. 
Then you have assignments, grades, course syllabus, that's the, the campus course syllabus. It's not anything that you need to be concerned about, but it's there. The when the student survey becomes available, make sure you do that. All right, settings is where you go to, to personalize your page so that when I see your name pop up, it will tell me your name or show me your picture or show me a picture that represents you. Please do that. You also can go there and put your email address in there if you want your messages to go somewhere besides your Alamo ACES email. You can tell it where to send your messages. What is your preferred email? It will go to your personal email. Most importantly, most importantly, under assignments, um, goes to the Under assignments, the very first thing you have to do show by date, show by type. It tells you right here. Always sort assignments by type. Show by date is the default in Canvas. We do not put dates on our assignments, so they come out all jumbled up. If you will sort by type, they will come out in a logical sequence. Do that first. And then please read the instructions for each assignment each week because the assignment, the assignment for the Wednesday test might change. There might be something in there that you need to know before you take that test. Go look at the Canvas assignment before you go to the wiki to take the test. It might or might not have changed, but there's some things there that you need to see. Then you have a section called Forms. There is a practice sheet here that you can use or not use, your choice. But one of the assignments is going to be a practice log. That means you keep a track Keep track of your, your practice time each week. If you want to include class time on that, you can, but remember that class time is not practice time. You're expected to practice a number of hours outside of class time. If you want to put the time it takes to take a test on your log, that's okay, because that's telling you what you did for the week. And then when you get your test back next week and pass it, you can say, wow, I had a good week. Let me go back at my practice log and see what I did that week. Or you didn't pass it, you can say, let me go back and see what I didn't do that week. And you can look at your practice log. It's for you, it's not for me. I wanna see that you did it, but don't come back at the end of the semester and send me 15 practice logs during week 16. That's not what, that's not what the point of the practice log is. There's an information sheet. If you have never filled out an information sheet, you can do it here and upload it, and I'll have some information about you with regard to your name, your email address, your personal email address, your phone number, what your, what your current speed is, and that sort of thing. If you've done this, if you did it last semester, you don't need to do it again. If you did it in the fall, you don't, I mean in the spring, you don't need to do it again. But if you want to do it again, you can. That's optional except for the brand new people. If you need to update your Eclipse contract, and you have to update it once a year, there is a copy of it here. You can download it and then upload it back again. And if you upload it here, I will see it and I will submit it to Eclipse. Or if you want to send it directly to Eclipse, you can do that. It works either way. Just make sure you do it before it expires because when it expires, they will cut you off. If they have a question about whether you're an enrolled student, they'll ask me or, or Ms. Woodard. They, they are not going to question whether you, they should uh, update your Eclipse contract without verifying it with us. They'll just automatically verify it. So go ahead and submit it directly to them if you want to, or you can submit it in this assignment under forms, and I'll take care of it. Important information, this is telling you about the app. 
Canvas has an app available on any smartphone or tablet. Download it. Here's why. Not only can you see the assignment there and read the assignment before you start your test, you can get messages there. So when I send you a message, it's going to send you a notification on your phone or on your tablet that I've sent you a message and you're not going to have to wonder, I mean, you're not going to have to find out on Wednesday when you go in to take your test that I sent you a message three weeks ago or three days ago or, you know, yesterday. As soon as I send you a message, it will, send, it will notify you and you can then look at that message and see if it's something you need to re respond to. That's especially true at the end of testing. That's when I send out all notices. Everybody that makes a 93 or above percentage-wise on their test will get a message from me each week. That message might be, you did a great job and that's all I'll say, but I'll send you back a co your test with my, my markings on it. It might be that I tell you you need to work on something that'll be in that message. Or it might be that you passed and, you know, great job, move to the next speed. That'll be in that message. Every, I try to send them out every Wednesday. I try to be finished with grading and have those, everything submitted back to you on Wednesday morning to give you time to see it before you take the Wednesday test. Might come sooner than that if I can get your test graded sooner than that. All right? Get the app so you know when I send messages. That's all I, I can say about that. Whether you use it to, to access the assignments or not doesn't matter. There's some CSR testing information here. I have not updated this since spring or maybe since summer, I guess I did at the beginning of the summer. So it may be a little bit out of date, but it's the same general information. I will get updates from Ms. Woodard as soon as she has a chance to get them to me. And speaking of Ms. Woodard, I can't tell you enough how much you need to be patient with her. She is dealing with a lot of students and every single student in this program, those 54 new students and these 94 speed students, she has to touch every single one of their uh, registrations. So be patient with her. If she doesn't get right back to you, understand, she will. She does care. I will help you any way I can, so will any other teacher here, but there's some things that only she can do. Faculty list, I've got to update that, so I'm not sure it's published yet, but it's, I will get it updated as soon as I get the new people on it. It may or may not have new, all the people on it now. And it's probably got a couple of people on it that need to come off. Those are degree and certificate worksheets for your use. If you, if you want to keep up with what you need to do, that's something Ms. Woodard will help you with. There is a grading rubric here that basically tells you how we're going to grade you at the end of the semester. Basically, it's going to tell you that if you do all of the assignments that we ask you to do and you pass to the next speed from the one you're enrolled in, you're going to make an A. If you do all the things that we tell you to do and you don't pass to the next speed, you might get a B. But if you don't do all the things that we ask you to do, pass or no pass, you're, going to, you're not necessarily going to get an A. Code of Ethics is there. This is a video from a guest speaker from a couple of semesters ago. This is NCRA information. How to save an Eclipse file as a PDF file. You need to know that because I need your transcript of your test saved as a PDF before you upload it. That's something you can do without even printing it or you can do before you print it. If you don't know how to do that, learn. Practice reminders, this is a document that Ms. Irving created that's got some good information in it about how to practice. If you are new to speed building, there's some information here that, that's, I haven't looked at this week. I need to look at and see if it needs some tweaking, but it, it's basic information about what you need to know as a new speed building person. The schedule is not there yet because I don't have it. We're still, we're still working on it. This is a Stena Dictionary that Ms. Mallon created one semester when she was doing Maymester uh, with Ms. Woodard. It may or may not be helpful to you. It's, no, it's, it's not a requirement. It's something that's just there for your information. 
This is telling you how to access the wiki. Basically, it's just the a link to get you to the wiki website. And that brings us to week one. You will see this, a week that looks like this every week, and it will only show, uh, at the end of this week, I'll show week two. You'll see week two. It's already got the sack pack there, and it tells you, there's the link to the sack pack, and it tells you to download it to your computer. If you want to print it, print it. If you don't want to print it, you don't have to. That's your first assignment. Your second assignment, PC Mock Notes. When you take your Wednesday test, you have your notes, your, your actual steno notes. I want you to download those or, or do whatever you have to do to get them to where you can upload them into this assignment. The notes themselves, not the transcript, not a cover sheet, just the notes. Because they are time stamped, and that tells us what time you finished your test. When you have finished taking your test, then you upload them. You can do them one at a time, or you can do them all three at the same time. That's your choice. But I want to see at least one upload of your Wednesday test notes only. You don't do this on Friday, and you don't do this during the Blitz. You just do it on Wednesday. That's because if you are an online, well, you're all online students now as far as the testing is concerned. This gives us an idea of how long it took you to edit your test because you are restricted to one hour for each test, a total of three hours for editing. That's the reason we do that. So remember that that's just your Eclipse notes, steno notes, not transcript. Just you upload your, before you begin your editing process. Canvas will post a time on it. The notes themselves usually have a time on them. Any questions about that? No, I'm still on the side. PC Mock Wednesday, this is where you will upload your test. Your test upload will be a transcript of your test that you have edited. Ed when you do the editing of your test, while you're editing, you can make whatever changes you want to because you're not listening to the recording at that point. You're doing this from memory and from your notes. You can add words, you can correct words, you can do whatever you need to do. That's editing. That's what you're going to keep time, keep track of your time on. When you finish editing, and you write your time down on your cover sheet, which I'll show you in just a minute, then you start the grading process. The grading process means that you go back and you listen again to the test, and you're reading it while you're listening to it. This time, any mistakes you find, you're going to put a mark there. Those are the errors that count in figuring your pass or fail. In this assignment, there will always be a copy of the cover sheet. These are the instructions of how to take the test. Come up. If you don't have Word, get it. You can get it through the school at no charge. Or Office 365. The instructions for how to take the test in a step-by-step -step format. Download that as needed. The only thing that's changed for those of you who have been here for a while is the fact that there is no online, I mean, no face to face sitting for the test. It's all submitting online. But it tells you to take the test from the wiki. It tells you, oh, I've got to change that. I've got to put up the new one. Sorry, that will, that's not there anymore. That line right there is gone. It'll start, it start here for online submission. It tells you how to do it, it tells you how to grade it. 
Okay. That's that's online. I'll upload a current one as soon as we get through here. Okay. Then there is a copy of the test form. The test form is your cover sheet. Your cover sheet is a requirement for every test. I need to know your name, legibly, first and last, because I've got some people with the same first name. And the last name needs to be the name that is on your ACES account. It can be, if you have another name besides that that you use now, or if you've gotten married since you started this process, and you haven't changed it in ACES, that's okay, but give me your name as it is in ACES also. The week number, the first test is week one. Second test is week two. Make sure you put the correct week number because that matters to me. When I'm grading your test, I go back to the wiki and go to the week number that it says right here and listen to the test while I'm grading it. So that needs to be there. I need to know for sure that that is the week one test. And this becomes very important later on down the line when we've got five or six different tests going on on blitz weeks in particular. I want to know the date you took the test. And I want to know the date you were supposed to take the test. I want to know the date you took the test. It doesn't have to be Wednesday. It doesn't have to be Thursday. It can be Sunday. But I want to know the date you took the test. The semester is fall 2019, always. That won't change. What I will ask you to do, if it's a Friday test, after you write fall, write Friday. Or write Friday fall, whatever you wanna do. But make sure you put Friday on there. If it's a blitz test, write Monday on the Monday test, Tuesday on the Tuesday test, etc. That helps me when I'm grading it. It's not. A, Gonna, it's not going to hurt your grade if you don't do it, but it's a, it's a helpful thing to me. Jury charge. Tell me right here what speed you took this test at. If you took it at 40, write 40. If you took it at 60, write 60. I don't want to have to go figure it out. This is the time you started editing. Test is going to take five minutes. You don't need to put that down there. I need to know your editing time. This is the start time for editing and the end time for editing. It cannot be more than an hour. If you run out of time, put the hour on there and stop editing. But send me what you've done. Error count. When you have graded it, after editing, then you grade. Tell me how many errors you think you have. You don't have to tell me whether it's a pass or fail. I'll figure that out. But tell me how many errors you think you have. Because I go by that to determine whether or not I need to regrade the test. If I need to regrade the test, I need to know that you have scored at least 93%. I've seen people write 100 or more, 100 plus. That's okay. If you, if you want to do that, that's okay. That's up to you. But I'm not going to check it if it says something like that. Or if it says too many, I'm not going to check it. I'm going to take your word for it that it's too many. Does that make sense? Typically, the lower speed people, I, the 40s particular, I will grade them all. But when they get up to the... the High speeds, I won't because they're long. There's a lot of pages there. Literary is the same thing. The speed that you took the test, the time you started editing that test, the time you stopped editing that test, how many errors on that test, and testimony the same thing. If you want to tell me something, put it down here. If I want to tell you something, there's a space right below there that I'll put it. And this is really only one page. I don't know why it shows up this way on this screen, but it does. It's really a one-page document. 
Any questions about the cover sheet? When do I want a cover sheet? Every test submission. Wednesday, you only need to submit one. Wednesday's test is considered one, even though there's three tests to it. So you've got lit, jury charge, and testimony all on one cover sheet, and that's submitted with your Wednesday graded transcript. Anyway, Friday, I've got, you've got one test. It will either be, it will only be one part. It will either be lit, jury charge, or testimony. That's all you'll fill out is the, whatever that one test is. The other two parts in there will be blank. That's your Friday test. Make sure I have a cover sheet. Your blitz test, you'll have a cover sheet with each part. Even if you take them all at the same time, I want a cover sheet with, let me show you one. When I get to week four, which you won't be able to see yet, week four has a sack pack, a practice log, a Monday blitz. That's where the Monday test is going to be submitted. Even if you take it on Sunday, you're going to submit it here. The Tuesday test, even if you take it on Sunday, you're going to submit it here. The Wednesday test, there's your notes, there's your test. The Thursday test, there's your test. And the Friday test, there's your test. That's why I need them all submitted separately. They all have a separate assignment. Because some people will only take one. For some reason, you have already passed lit. You're already at mock on lit. And you've passed your 180 test 15 or 20 times. If you want to skip that Monday blitz test, that's OK. You can do that. It won't count against you. Okay, so that's why there is a separate assignment for each one. If for some reason you can't get to all of them, you can only get to one of them, that's okay too. The blitz tests are your option, but don't assume that you don't need to take them. They're there for you to, to help you build your speed up, get to the next speed. If you're on the borderline of passing a 120, you've got three chances in lit, and it's the, it's the time for the, the lit test on Friday. You've got three chances that week to pass your 120 lit. Okay, any questions about the assignments on Canvas? This information right here is always here, but it will move to the bottom. Each week I'll move the week to the top. Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry, I have to go, but I just wanted to clear up on something on the editing time because I think I was taking more than of my of that time. The ed the end time is when you're done editing. Let's say I'm gonna I need to go count my errors. That's not part of the end time, right? It's only when I'm the beginning of editing. When you are not listening to the tape and you are going through your document, fixing it, that's your editing time. What you're talking about is your grading time. Grading time does not count against you. Because you won't have, you probably won't have a chance to grade it when you take your your test, your real test. You will have an hour to edit it, but you won't have to grade it. You won't have any time okay, to grade. I think it. I was counting my. A lot of people do. That's why I pointed it out. You're not alone in that. Okay, good. Just wanted to clear up. Okay. Any any questions from anybody else? That's all there is to Canvas. But remember that Canvas is your class for speed building. No matter what course you're registered for, okay? And remember this one, remember the inbox. Anytime something comes up on Canvas that you don't understand, or even on the wiki that you don't understand or that doesn't work for you, message me. Send me a message on the inbox and I will get back to you as quickly as possible. I might say, I don't know, but I'll ask. I might say, I need to talk to Ms. Mallon. I might say, I need to ask Ms. Dean. I might say, I don't know, but I'll get back to you quickly because I have the app on my phone and my iPad and one or the other of them is always with me. 
And I do check it regularly throughout the day to make sure that I don't have any messages from anybody. I've had two messages since I got here this morning that I've been able to respond to this morning because of that. So put it on your phone. Everybody keeps their phone in their pocket usually. Any questions? Anything you can think of I didn't cover? Okay, that's it for me. I'm done. If you have any questions, I'm always available. You're our, would you punch the button on the camera, Kiki? Right there on the